Behold, RPGs and Baby Makes 3. RPGs and Baby Makes 3, Reimagined. RPGs and Baby Makes 3, like a zombie back from the dead. I think that's a pretty accurate description. A little bit zombie-like. It has been one hell of a year. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot. There's, it just, this year I felt like was a toddler. It just kept going, and you're just waiting for them to go to bed so you can, you know, become a sane person again after you cry for 30 minutes. I am Rob, and that is Gretchen, <laughs> and that has been our situation. I mean, it's funny because, like... Totally worth it. There, yeah. It's all, it's the kid stuff, and then, of course, you know, my dad passed away, and then I got this, like, pre-cancer thing on my face. Dude, it's just, there's some hits. And then we got sick, like, three weeks in a row. No, I was sick for a month and a half, Rob. But I was sick for three weeks, and then I got really sick at my dad's ceremony. Memorial. Memorial ceremony, and I had to miss the dinner, like, that dinner, because I just could not get out of bed. And then, <laughs> you were and we got better, and then we got sick again for another three weeks. Because remember, and that was when we Look, had the flu. Yeah, the bottom yeah. line is, is when you have a toddler, you're gonna get sick constantly. I didn't, you know, I knew the kids get got sick, but oh my god! I mean, it's been like. <laughs> <laughs> ages since we put out a podcast. But I will say this. We did have a really good run from like January to August. Well, I don't know. He went back to daycare and everybody. Well, with the kid. But my dad died May 30th. No, I'm talking about <laughs> sickness, Rob. Okay. Well, I'm talking about just general Well, I'm trauma. talking about sickness. We were great from January to August. Okay. Yes, you're right. We but we Physically. Had, but we had a lot going on. Um, so there was a lot going on. I mean... You know, that's the funny thing, though, and we're going to talk a little bit about that with in terms of gaming, but, God, man, it's like, you just sometimes, I think it happens to everybody, no matter if you're a parent or not, but I think that, that a parent, as a gamer, like, if you have just parenting, just normal parenting, right, that makes having any free time to do anything whatsoever already difficult. So you're like starting there. When you add in any other difficult element, whether it be a personal thing or the kid gets sick, forget it. It's it's not happening. Like you're not doing anything you want really. I mean you have you just have to go all in on fixing whatever Yeah, but I think there's some people situation. out there who just don't give an F and... Well if you're gonna be a good parent we're talking about Yeah. Here. Yeah, you gotta be all in. Because, like, on Tuesday... so Because they're yeah, all in. <laughs> so Lincoln was sick on Tuesday, and, you know, so he was at home the whole day, and I didn't. I don't even think I looked at my work email once, because I just had to just take care of him. I know, and when he was I got moving. home, you had that crazy look in your eyes, like, I need, I need help. <laughs> well, I think I would have been, a, you had been gone for about five hours when I first saw you, and then I kind of gave you a little bit to go decompress, because you had a really... It was a hard Rough, day. Rough, hard, really hard, day. hard day. So um, I was happy to do that. You know, you needed it. I could tell. <laughs> um, and, uh, but yeah, I mean, that said, why don't we roll for initiative because we have done a little bit of gaming and then we can kind of get into it. I don't know. I, I kind of feel like we should also talk about our medications right now too. Right? Because that's what, we're, we're griping a lot. So I feel like as... Oh, I got this medication for my hip. I got this this medication for when I when I have when my my joints are, are aching and I feel the rain coming. Are we griping or are we commiserating with other parents? Because there's probably if I mean I other parents that are out there maybe listening to this are probably like, man, I get it. I haven't gamed in six months, or I haven't slept in three years. Yeah, so they're probably <laughs> we're let's roll for initiative. Yeah. Bumper missing. So, to talk really about gaming here, normally I would ask you, you know, kind of get into it and kind of ask you, kind of you lead the way here. But I, our topic today is going to be a little bit 
based on the gaming you have been doing lately, which is almost done. Yeah, which is, is pretty much none. All right, so I want to share then what I've been, because I have been doing some gaming. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, you have. I told you I was playing a Cyberpunk 2020, the original Cyberpunk game where I was like an assassin in this tournament. No. I told you I was playing in a... He just didn't even listen. Yeah, probably So not. I'm playing in a Cyberpunk <laughs> 2020, At which is... At least you know me. <laughs> which is an old school... I think it's from the 80s. It's an 80s RPG. So it's really funny because it's like... It was written in the 80s, so it's like... You know, the computers that they describe that you get that are like supposed to be super high tech are actually really inferior to what we have. Like, <laughs> not even close. Um, but it's really cool. Like, it's an old school game. And I'm playing in this kind of tournament that is where everybody plays the same scenario and you get points based on your assassinations and stuff. So I played... I've only played the first scenario for that, um, but I'm in that tournament. Um, it went really well. I, I assassinated. I don't want to reveal too much because we're Are all going to sure talk about you sure you told me about this? I definitely told you about this. It was awesome. Um, <laughs> was it a Thursday night game? No, this was like... I played for like... It was midweek, like a month ago. Oh. Um, I'm still so, writing... So right around Lincoln's birthday. No. So maybe I was birthday planning. I don't know. You were you, you <laughs> pretended to listen. Uh, that's I can confirm that. I'm I'm really good at pretending to listen. But that was cool though. It's it's fun to be. I've been really into the old school games lately. Um, yeah, you know, you've been doing something with uh, some others, right? Yeah. So I've been doing the Temple of Elemental Evil, which is on the RPGs and Baby Makes Three YouTube channel, and people have been watching it. Actually, like the first episode has 750 plus views. Didn't I buy that for you as a gift? Yes, you did. It's like 40 pounds. Yeah, it's, it was 100 bucks. It's the Goodman <laughs> Games. So I'm running the first AD&D first edition module with second edition players. Because most people... So I'd let people make second edition characters. So they're slight, they're more powerful than your first edition characters are. Um, but I'm using the giant fifth edition books that you got me, the Goodman Games ones, for like pictures and expansions and stuff. Um, this won't come out before we play this, but there's a, there's a, um, like I use the, the, there was an intro scenario that was written into the, into the, the fifth edition remake of like, they get attacked by bandits at the very beginning before they even get to the town and even start the adventure. And it's kind of written in there that like after a couple of them get killed, they escape, they run away. And so some are inevitably going to escape considering it's first level characters and stuff and then you end up going into the town and you end up seeing one of the one of the people you fought like working in this construction area and so it kind of like as soon as you get to town it starts off oh there's stuff going on underneath the surface here and that was really cool because like that's not in the original module so i added that and then they're doing this thing where they're going to um well i think it's in the module it's a I, in the fifth edition one, it's a it's a rock, but I switch it to a wyvern because I just think wyverns are really cool. But where they get hired by this wizard to go, Wait, it was a rock, but you changed it to a wyvern. Yeah, a rock is a, like a giant eagle. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then I'll, I change it to a wyvern, which is like a dragon. <laughs> I was imagining like a pet rock. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that was so a Pet rock. I was like a smiley face on stuff. <laughs> I thought that was really stupid. I'm like, this doesn't fit the tone at all. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting into the woods here, but into the weeds and the woods. But anyway, the point is, is like, it, it's it's the original module. It's done completely with the heart of the original module. It's a fifth edition version, but like. And I know 5th edition has some reputation a little bit uh, for being softer or whatever. I don't know. I, I don't care. I don't get into that too much. But for... It, this is definitely, like, old school. It has an old school feel, even though it is for 5th edition. And so I've taken... I'm already pulling stuff and grabbing pieces of it. And then actually, the next place that they'll end up going relatively soon is to this town called Nulb. And there's like literally one page on it in the uh, in the original module, but in the Goodman Games version, it's all like done up. Like they've expanded on it a ton, and so I'm going to use that. It's really cool to like kind of combine those things. That's a great those Goodman Games Fifth Edition 
I should have explained this. So Goodman Games has these special. They're I think they're they're called like original or classic modules reimagined. I think is what they call them. And they're hard to reimagine to anything. And I know. It sounds so fancy. Like oh my gosh. like here in Savannah, they wanted to do what is it? It was like recreation reimagined. See, it sounds so amazing. I mean, and, there's, and it has a kind of a mystical quality yeah. to it. Like, uh, like we're going to do things better this time. So maybe this is RPGs and Baby Make 3. Reimagined. Re-imagined. <laughs> <laughs> maybe this is episode one of Reimagined. Um, so we, well, we are kind of expanding our scope. We are expanding our scope a little bit. The, um, But these, these modules, they've done a bunch of them. The... I don't know, there's a new one coming out really soon, but they did, like, Isle of Dread and Keep on the Borderlands, Castle Amber. I also used the Castle Amber yeah, one, I ran you through that. And um, they're just really great. They're expensive. They're, like, 50 bucks. The, the Temple of the Elemental Evil one is 100 It was 100 because it's two volumes. It's a huge it's thing. It's huge. Oh, my God. You it's could... literally over 600 pages between the two books. It's if, awesome. If you threw those books at somebody... It would not go well for like, that Like, I gotta be honest with you, it's so massive and so amazing that it's kind of a pain. Because it's so big and heavy and it's this huge, like, thing, you know? It looks fancy and good, though. It does. It looks yeah. awesome. And it is awesome. Maybe so, we'll throw um, up a picture on our abandoned Facebook page. <laughs> did we our reimagined No, Facebook we need to do page. a reimagined one that's a group. It's a group instead of a, instead of a page. Because you want to be able to have people to let people interact. So let's do... RPGs and Baby Makes 3, the Facebook page, reimagined. <laughs> People can interact on a page, too. No, you can. Not really. Yeah, you can. No, like, chat pages are more like... We're, we want to allow people to post up their own stuff and things like that yeah, as well. We could, we could do a group. Yeah, a group. We'll do a group. Yeah. Reimagined All four group. of our listeners can join. Well, let me tell you something. The, that's I was about to say that, is we've been doing the the you know weekly bi-weekly ish temple of elemental evil and so Poor we, we just did our fifth <laughs> uh we did our fifth session but really it's kind of like six sessions because we did a session one half where we kind of did a session zero slash intro session mm. we got we've already got over we just did one last thursday so it's been a week that has over 50 views, and that's the sixth episode. So that's people who are still following along. So, I mean, it doesn't sound like much, and it's not like a ton of people, but 50 people. All 24 people who have Facebook accounts. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Facebook is kind of dead for me, to be honest with you. Yeah, you're not on there much. Yeah, I don't like how to do with Discord. Who knows? Who knows what we got to do? I don't know. I, look, I don't even have... What day is it? I know. <laughs> I know it's that's another thing too. Is like when you got a kid, you just do the best you can. Just yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, you've been doing some gaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then we've got this nine lives of a holiday game yeah. planned for the Christmas break. Yeah, I'm excited about that. And it's going to be our first in person gaming again for a while. From I mean, pre pandemic. Right? No, we did. Did we have people here once? We did ten candles, and that was in that was in person. Was that in person? It was. You know, um, it's kind of funny because, so, when you have a kid, they, you can kind of get them on a sleeping schedule, which made it easier for us to do gaming. Mm -hmm. And then, they just say, you know, F you, I'm gonna do what I want, and then you have no idea when they're gonna go to bed. Yeah, that was a big problem, is he would go to bed at 7.30 every day, and then now, and then it switched to, it transitioned from that to 7.30 to 9 o'clock every day, and you have no idea yeah. what it was going to be. So our, our next in-person session is actually happening during the day. Yeah, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on a weekday. What? While we have a, while we have a sitter. So we're going to do brunch, which is yeah. fun. Yeah, I mean, so that was, that was our... That's. I think we will talk more about this. I don't know. Maybe now. Maybe later. I don't know. But our solution for gaming was hiring a sitter, because that's the only way we can game unless we take turns watching him. Yeah, I mean, it's gone are the days of 
And we, we should probably talk about this. And this, I think, gets into our main topic of the of the ses- of this episode. Um, and that's that, like, you know, you're. It can be difficult. There are times when it's just really hard to get any gaming in. And so we've had that experience, right? And and that I think kind of leads to like what kind of gaming are we doing? And like how important is it to us? What are we willing to what lengths are we willing to go to <laughs> to like game, you know? Yeah. Because we're doing we've had a sitter a few times to do the Ravenloft game which Amanda a frequent guest and third member of the RPGs and Baby Makes 3 team uh, was running and the last session just happened before a hiatus um, but that was pretty crunchy for you that was it really wasn't what like your favorite style of oh, game so man, we were there's using there's just so many numbers and there's so many it was Pathfinder options. by the way so many options and all of those options need numbers and uh, look okay i'm a stereotypical girl i'm not not a numbers person i would hardly say that you are stereotypical girl in that respect maybe in that one way (laughs) (laughs) but um and i'm just not not i don't know when i see numbers i kind of zone out and i and it, it was just, it's so crunchy. It was just too much for me. And especially, you know, I can kind of deal with numbers and some crunch here or there. But when I'm as tired as I am constantly, <laughs> no. Well, and I know, hadn't updated my character in, I don't know. Ages, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny, though, because I don't have system mastery over Pathfinder. So that be, that meaning that I don't really understand the rules of Pathfinder I mean, I do understand enough to play, but I don't, I don't have mastery over it. Not like I do for AD&D 2nd Edition. Like, you know, when I run 2nd Edition AD&D, I can just pull out any rule and tell you what it is, and I can help you all the time. Yes. Instantly. And you, you were very, you're very patient with me with that. Well, and also, it's class-based instead of skill-based, so when you level up, you don't spend all this time... There aren't, like, a thousand points to give away. Like, you get a new non-weapon proficiency every four levels. So, like, on every four levels, you add a new skill. That's it. Okay, like, you it. know... It's pretty straightforward. So, but the point being is that even... Like, I'm, I'm kind of, like... I'm grasping what you're saying on a little smaller level in that it was too complicated for me to do anything other than the character I made, which was Gort, Son of Fury, the Minotaur Paladin, who was basically just a brute. He literally ate meat from a sack of meat. He one time killed or stopped, yeah, killed an enemy with by picking up a movable bridge and smashing him with it. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a, a damage machine. And, a damage machine. And so, like, I didn't... I put a, I put in a very focused character. I didn't have to learn spells. All I had to do was add up my numbers for how much am I doing, how high am I rolling to hit, and how much damage am I doing. And see, then I went in and did a hunter with an animal companion with all these different feats and all these... I, I just... I can't keep track and of spells. one, and I'm supposed to keep track of two. Yeah, and spells. It's a really cool character. I mean, it's a it's an awesome character. I love the character Pika and Isao. Pika is your main your your ha- halfling, right? Yeah. Um, that Gort, because he's from Dragonlance, always thinks you're a Kender, although you're a weird. You act weird for a Kender. Uh, I'm I'm really straight laced for a Kender. Uh huh. And then uh, <laughs> Isao, Isao is, is a mountain lion. Mountain lion. <laughs> which is awesome. I mean, they're really cool characters. are really interesting. And when you aren't stuck in crunch and you can do role-playing, I think you role-play the character well. Yeah. But the point I'm getting at is that the only role-playing we were doing and that you've had a chance to do was a game that Major Head Hurt 
<laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. I think that that's one of the things, like, when you get like this, and it becomes so important to play the games you really want to play, you know? Because it's no offense to Amanda, because we love Amanda, and, like, I will play in her game anytime. But when I can only play once a month, maybe that probably... And it's so hard, and it costs us, like, $100. <laughs> like, do we want... Like, is that the once a month game we're going to play? Or do we want to blow off steam because we've been so burned out, you know? Well, one thing we talked about was instead of these longer campaigns is to do zines and short... Short campaign arcs, like three sessions. And something that kind of keeps things... I don't know. I like like some variety. Fresh and moving. Because I I don't want to... Like, that was the thing that when we were role-playing a lot, I had a lot of different characters that I could play... And sometimes those characters hit me on the right day where I just felt like being silly and nonsensical or dark and brooding. And Right? And Pika is only one thing. And she's also very middle of the road, but I've also changed her to be a little bit more joking and interactive. More so than when I had originally created her. But I can't... I'm not... Like, I love playing Tick Tick because he is so fun and so loving and just wants to be out there in the world and experience it. He's a bright, shining light. Don't ever hurt that Rob. Tick Tick Bramble Bing, the Kender that Gretchen plays in my Dragonlance game, is who she refers to. so much fun. And, you know, life has been really hard. And I just want that fun or I want that silliness. Like, Nine Lives of a Hollow, we're going to play cats, Viking cats. Yeah, so this is Love a Gem it. Room Games release. It was a zine. I think it was pretty, somewhat more recently. It came a little bit fast, but it's a zine. You, you, yeah, you basically play as like these berserker cat types, and everyone you have nine lives, and every fight you roll dice, and if you win, you kill the thing, and if you lose, you die. And as you die and come back. If you die in glory, like in combat like that, then you become more powerful. You gain new abilities and strengths, and it makes you more powerful. So the closer you get to your final death, the more powerful you become. That sounds awesome. Yeah, and and it's a... the Actually, it, the the backing I did came with a an adventure module that would take more than one session. But I think it could also be fun for one. But it would be no more than three. And you end up playing three sessions, you play the cat, you have a lot of fun, and then you move on. Because it and kind then, of feels you know, like that's right, play right? low stakes afterwards, which I love. I can play low, low stakes. stakes. It's oh, so much fun. Low stakes is so fun. Who does low stakes? Low stakes is Nerd Burger games, and low stakes is a game based on what we do in the shadows. You basically play it as what you do <laughs> in the shadows. And you play, it's GM-less, and it's, but it's really cleverly done GM-less. It's kind of... It's kind of like, rather than GMless, it's almost like everybody's the GM. Yeah. Because you do it like scenes, like the show or movie, and your character is not in every scene. So when your character is not in the scene, you are the GM. And um, it's a fun game. It's Love that game. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, I like playing darker games or more serious games, too. I mean, I, I can do that. Like, I mean, God, Alice is Missing was one of my favorite, is one of my favorite games of all time, ever playing that game that, that time that we played um i enjoyed doing the desanction which the stream is on the rpgs and baby makes yeah, three site hard. that was pretty dark i ran that and and it was three sessions you know that was only three sessions uh-huh but i think that i think that when gaming is really limited the point is is whatever you're into i think it's important to play that game and to me I am excited about Nine Lives of Valhalla. I mean, I'm going to be running it, but it's also like, if I can just kind of make it this like crazy, you know, human versus, or dog versus cat, just this whole world and make it really fun. Like, it can be fun for me, really fun for me. Not so serious, you know? Yeah. Although I haven't been doing a lot of serious games. And, and it's it's very, how many, it's not very crunchy at all. No, it's, there's literally, you make, you roll two dice in every single co- confrontation. Yeah. 
I roll dice that are in opposition to that. If you win, you kill the thing, and if you don't, then if you lose, then you die. That's the only mechanic. The rest of the stuff is, like, observational, and, like, you just have, like, if you want to learn stuff or gain information or, like, things like that, you have to think about asking. You have to explore the world, and then you get information. It's it's not crunchy. You have four stats. That's you great. know? So... <laughs> I, I mean, it. it's... Yeah, so, I mean, it's going to be... I think it's going to be fun, and then, of course, we're having... It's kind of an interesting group of people. Yeah. It's you and I and Amanda, and then Kat, who was on... Kat Valentine? Kat Valentine, yeah. yeah. Who was on our Edition Wars episode of the show, where she kind of advocated for 5th edition. Who's she's, delightful. She's delightful. Who also I, has a son named Lincoln. Yes, and she does Ghost Table Games uh, Discord, um, which is a group that does a lot of um, charity work. They do like charity streams and stuff like that. And uh, Brian McGregor, who's been played with us, he was in the uh, Ten Candles live stream we did. So that's in there. He's in there. He's playing with us as well. And then Greg, our good buddy Greg, yeah. our good friend Greg. And we're going to do brunch. Greg Davis. But I mean, like, right now, that is exactly the game I need. Yeah. Get together with friends, eat breakfast, and play a game about cat berserkers. Yeah. Like, that sounds perfect to yeah. me right now. And that's not a knock on crunchy Pathfinder Ravenloft. It's just it's I don't just have the brain capacity total, for... Yes. I just, I need something. I need to dumb it down a little bit. <laughs> right? And sometimes you can smart it up, like, but not right now. No, no, not right now. I'm, I'm actually pretty sure that when you have a kid, you get dumber. Well, I think parts of your brain are taken over by the Lightning instincts of reflexes. keeping, yes, <laughs> and then like their needs. You know, like it, be, it kind of overwhelms a yeah, lot of things. You know, you're like, I don't know, it's yeah. just. <clears throat> The, the reflexes thing, that's that's the one of the more interesting things of becoming a parent. Yeah. That'd be interesting in, like, in a role-playing game for them to have, like, asset parent plus one to whatever your reflex stat, related stat is. That would be pretty Wouldn't cool. Wouldn't that be an interesting yeah. thing? Yeah. I throw that out there. Somebody can use that for your game if you're making games. <laughs> I mean, because it is true. It's like, that's not, a, that's not BS. Like, I am, I have much better... Or at least awareness like I you know I've caught the boy so many times I've avoided so many collisions or that or things oh he's about to bump his counter. head into the into the thing or, <laughs> he just, you know your you hand just put pops a hand out or, yeah yep or something falls off yeah like you said falls off the counter or whatever it is I mean like definitely should have some stat buffs for that yeah yeah i think intelligence minus one parenting plus one somewhere yeah like plus reflexes. one reflexes yeah whatever that dexterity. is dexterity <laughs> whatever it is in your game you know what i mean <laughs> that's funny <laughs> quickness <laughs> who knows um all right well yeah. let's wrap it up and then we'll kind of finish up the show with a couple of other things let's do it code three Error. Code three. Error. So, while we haven't been playing a t doing a ton of gaming, been doing some gaming, there is, we have, we've both been reading a lot of fantasy and sci-fi sword stuff. Sci-fi sword stuff? I don't know. Stuff. It's not sci-fi for you, is it? You've yeah. just been reading, though, this series of books that you have really been loving. What is the... Who was the author in the series? Jennifer what? Armentrout. Oh, okay. Armentrout. Um, I don't... What's the basic premise of these books? Like, what's the characters? What's the thing? What's it all about? Well, there's been two series right now. And the first one is about uh, a woman who... So the world is kind of weird. There's things called primals and other things called gods. But it's all based of, off of vampire mythology. Mm -hmm. So, and the primals are really powerful. The gods are powerful. But, and 
this one woman was, God, it's so convoluted. She was promised to a primal as a consort and then she was rejected and then it's how it goes from there. So I think it's called like, I don't know. The, uh, but so you read like a prequel series or you read the, 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 yeah, I read the, the, yeah, I read the prequel and then, which was the second series. And then I realized you left, read the second series first, but the second series was yeah, the and it left series. on a cliffhanger. So I I discovered that if I read the first series, it would fill me in on what actually ends up happening. Because I was like, what the hell? How long do I have to wait to find out what happened? And so I have some idea what happened. And I'm I'm I don't know. Did I ruin it? Maybe. But you know what? At least I don't have to sit there wondering what happened. <laughs> um. And, you know, I revisited uh, Anne Rice, and I did Tale of the Body Thief, which I thought was pretty fantastic. Nice. And then I switched over to Memnock the Devil, which I thought was pretty horrible. I have an interest in the vampire stuff from that era in kind of reading it, because I kind of want to try doing White Wolf's vampire <sighs> game. I want to run that at some point. I want to... Again, not, maybe not a long thing. Maybe something shorter. Because that's kind of... I would want to run it, like, pretty dark, you know? But I have an interest in that. I think it's fascinating that you went back to that. I mean, I was in... So I think that the, the movie, Interview with a Vampire, came out in 94, which would have been my junior... No, my senior... My junior and senior year. The second half of my junior year... And the first half of my senior year in high school. And, I mean, I don't know. Like, we were all, like, we were, you know, reading fantasy and sci-fi and and horror. Like, that kind of supernatural stuff all the time. Like, you know, I was reading all that. And, I mean, that book, when the movie came out, like, all of me and all my friends, we all read that book. You know? And And I also remember reading, at the time, they they went by Poppy Z. Bright. I think they've transitioned now, so I, I don't know what their new name is. Um, and that was really, I might want to revisit those again, because those are really gritty. Um, and what is it? Is it a, it's a vampire, vampire-based. vampire um, I think it's very LGBTQ. Um, gotcha. So, um, yeah, but... I, mean, I don't want to not read anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I, I do want to, I don't know, it was kind of neat revisiting some of that. Um, God, what else have I read? I don't know. We've been reading. Yeah, you've, I've you've, been reading a lot of different been stuff. Flip, just say, say what? Grim Dark. I I did read a lot of Grim Dark actually, um, this year, and I I have really enjoyed it, but I kind of have dipped away from reading Grim Dark exclusively. Because I had been basically just reading Grimdark, 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 like book after book after book. Um, Joe Abercrombie, a lot of that stuff. Um, and let me just bring up my my list here on Goodreads because I'm like sitting here thinking. <laughs> um, so I had been reading all this Grimdark and then I sort of got off of it. And I ended up reading... So the, I was... I'm looking at my list here, and there was just a lot. You know what? I have been doing a lot of different books the whole year, to be honest with you. Because I did Ariadne, and I read the... Oh, I read... Ariadne. That was amazing. Yeah. Oh, um, my God. So Ariadne is a... Let me see here. Okay. By, I also by read Jennifer Gathering Saint. of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. That was pretty cool. Um, but Ariadne is by Jennifer Saint, and it's a... a, a Greek, a retelling of the Greek myth of Ariadne, and it's really fascinating. And then she also wrote Electra, which I did read as well. Um, but yeah, I, I read a lot of Joe Abercrombie, but actually, kind of what stuck with me, I've also read a lot of the Witcher books this year. Yeah, you have. What um, was the Captain? Oh, God, I wish I could remember the name of the parrot that had a great name. Um, but I actually, probably the books that have really interested me the most like the thing the book that has interested me the most was the jasmine throne mm. by tasha Sur- surrey which i have recommended to you as well it's a it's um an indian author who is kind of integrating some indian myths and stuff into a fantasy story and so 
It's about the. Yeah, you really recommend that? I'd like to check. I out. do, and it, it's about like a a deposed princess and a child or a, a woman who narrowly escaped basically the killing of all of these sort of gifted children mm. and so she's sort of like hiding in plain sight basically as a servant in this castle or what you might call it kind of the tent like the the I, yeah it's kind of a castle and the two of those characters and they're like it follows them both of those characters and what's going on with both of those two characters and a few others as well. And it was really interesting. And there's a second book has already come out and I haven't read it yet because I've kind of been savoring <laughs> the moment to read it because the third book isn't out yet of mm. the trilogy. So oh, I know yeah. I'll have to wait. So I'm kind of like, I've been putting it off a little bit, but I mean, there's so many good books out there. And yeah. like when I can't play RPGs, like, you, you said mentioned it the other day like it's been a nice escape it does feel like i can get into these worlds and these stories and like and ultimately it does help my role playing and like helps me as a storyteller and then also the store uh, being a storyteller to our kid and mm -hmm. and you know all of that stuff we do so well i wanted to circle back to some of the other reading i've done uh, one of my favorite books that i've read in a while is ring shout I don't know how to pronounce this person's name. I'll give it a swing. P. Jelly Clark. Okay. Um, but it is, it is amazing. It is about, so they reimagined the Ku Klux Klan as demons. And it was really good in the way that the, one of the characters is uh, Gullah. Uh, and Gullahichi and which is really prevalent where we live. Yeah, so where like we live. it's in in the Low Country, in Savannah. We live in Savannah, but they're really prevalent in the Low Country. It's sort a of a small, rich, community. beautiful culture. Yeah, yeah but um, small. And so there's a character in there who speaks with the accent that's known for for that group. And um, I don't know. I just thought it was really good. And then I also one of my favorite authors is Caitlin Dowdy, who writes about the industry of death and also how people process death throughout the world and that was that was a great book. what was the name of that book from here to eternity yeah you mentioned that because i we we've had some discussions about death and and like what we think about like what are the you know because of my dad's passing and it was it was like looked at it was so sad and like it we, we kind of talked about, like, is this really the way that we think of, like, how we want to consider mortality? Mm -hmm. You know, is that really what I want and, or what we want, you know, as individuals and, and as, a, as a unit together, you know? Yeah. And From Here to um, Eternity talks about death rights all over the world, and it was... Absolutely fast. I got to remember to put that on my list. I actually want to read that book. Really good. Um, but maybe so, yeah. we should wrap up. I mean, we, we're we glad that you're listening right now. Again. I know you've been waiting on this. To RPGs and Baby Makes 3. Reimagined. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can send us an email at rpgsandbabymakes3 at gmail.com. And I actually get that email like I checked that email. You use the number three at the end there. RPGs and baby makes three. The number three at gmail.com. And uh, on the videos on YouTube, give first of all follow the page, like the page on YouTube, but also you know give the thumbs up, make some make some comments and stuff like that. We do read them. So if you listen to this on the uh, the YouTube, then. Leave a comment. Leave something like that. Give us reviews. I don't know. What do they do nowadays? More people will hear us. And we have really important things to say. Some days. <laughs> and with that, we're going to head out. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Take care, y'all. <laughs>